What's up? What's good? It's your boy Zillionaire. Welcome to the show, man. This story right here is very, very disturbing. Very disturbing. This mother had a history of violence and abuse for 15 years. Child Protective Services allowed her to still keep her children. Crazy part about it is, after a while, she ended up killing one of her kids, man. Just sad. Just go to show you that the Child Protective Agency could care less about anything. Child Protective Agency don't care about what goes on in the household with the kids. They only care about getting a check. That's all they care about is getting a check. Now, we're going to get into this story, man. It's some very messed up things that happened in this case, man. Let's get into this, man. What's up? What's good? It's your boy Zillionaire. Welcome to the show. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, donate, and all that good stuff. Shout out to um, my real true supporters that do donate to the channel, man. I really appreciate y'all. I got to give y'all a shout out. Now, this story right here is very disturbing. Very disturbing. Okay, very, very disturbing. I don't understand why this didn't have uh, uh, more national attention on this story. Okay, now... I, I'm gonna read. I'm, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read this. So the report shows that over the years, there were doctors who confirmed scars left by burns and beating with extension cords. There were investigators concerned by a controlling mother who had let them take pictures of their kids, and it was allegations of abuse made that made them stop and question where Janai actually was. Now she lied and said that her daughter was with. Her godmom. This is what she lied and said, but really she had broke she broke her legs and put her in a freezer. Okay, now this is where the story is leading to. According to the news report, Thomas' history with CPS dates back to 2000 when she was 16. Nowhere to be found to give consent for a premature baby to get medical treatment. Through 2015, the mother of five was investigated for family violence and physical abuse and neglect. So. This has been going on for 15, 16 years. And I can't believe they allowed this mother to keep all five of her children. For 15, 16 years, she's getting calls. They're seeing bruises. The medical report said that her kids was being abused. And they let her keep the kids. This is going to show you the system don't care nothing about these children. No one does. No one cares about the kids. If your parents... If you have, listen, if you have parents that don't care about their kids, what makes you think this system is going to give a crap? That's not their blood. That's not their seed. They're in it to get a check. That, that's all. They're not going to, to be a CPS worker, you really have to give a crap. And a lot of them don't. Okay? A lot of them just don't give a crap, man. And, and I don't even understand why they're in that field. But it's just to get a check. It's just to get a check. An autopsy report showed Janiah was severely emaciated. And weighed just 44 pounds at the time of her death. Her leg was also broken. And the coroner estimates they had been broken two to four weeks prior to the death because her legs had begun to heal. That is crazy. She broke her daughter's leg before she killed her. And they could see that it was about a month ago because the healing from where it broke started to come back and heal. Also, there were lig lig ligature marks showing she was tied up. Lord have mercy. While child protective service workers last saw Janiah in June 2014, neighbors reported seeing the girl rummaging through garbage cans looking for food in December last year. They described her as being dirty and having matted hair. Investigators say time, her mother, which his name is um, Kishiana Thomas, Kishiana Thomas dislikes her daughter due to incontinence problem. Her daughter had a disability, and the rest of the affidavit shows Janai was locked in a bathroom without food, clothes for weeks at a time. The door to the bathroom was often barricaded so Janai could not escape, the report shows. The Brandon mother, accused of abusing and killing 11 year old daughter Janai, then hired her body in the freezer for two years, accepted a plea deal for 65 years. I don't understand why these women out here having kids that they don't want. If you don't want the kid, give it up to adoption or give it up to, for the family member. Give it away. Why are you beating? Why are y'all beating and abusing these children? I, I, don't, I don't get it. But a lot of these mothers, they take out their anger 
They, are, they, they want something to take out their anger and aggression on. So they'll target one of their children. Whoever they're mad at, if they're mad at the baby daddy, or they're mad because they're not getting a check for this kid, they're going to hone in on this child and, and take out all their anger and, and aggression against the child that they're not getting paid for. Her daughter had a disability. She wasn't getting nothing for the disability. She wasn't getting no money for it. She was pissed off. She was angry. She's she, mother of five all by herself. I think she had like three or four baby fathers, something like that. It's just crazy. You're having sex and, and sleeping with all these men, then you don't want the kids. Give these children, these kids are not have to, have asked to be here. This little girl spent 11 years of torment and torture from her mother. Her mother tortured her, locked her in bathrooms, starved her for weeks in, for weeks on end, beat her with electric cords till she bled, put whelps and scars all on her, tied her up, put her in basements, locked her in rooms and closets, broke her legs. What? Ah, oh, boy. Then they tell my son that she pled down to second degree murder and got 65. How can you, this is, this is worse than some second, this was premeditated unadulterated murder. How are you going to let her plead down to 65 years? This woman should get life with no parole. So she gets 65 years. Do you know after 30 years or 25 years, she could go up to the parole board and she could probably get out. She probably can get out of jail when she turned about 55, 60. So she could still live her life. I mean, it's crazy, man. So 65 years, she might not do the whole 65. Like I say, after 25, 30 years, you could get a parole hearing. See if you can get parole for good time and, and going to school and getting an education and good behavior and certain jobs you do and, and, and your service to the prison and certificates that you get in there. All that stuff adds up. She might get out. It's, that's the sad part. This little girl lived in 11 years of pure hell at the hands of her own mother. Well, at least she's in a place now where there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no betrayal, there's no hurt, there's no harm. She's in a place where it's always joy, it's always laughter, it's always love, man. R.I.P. Janiya Thomas, man. This is some sad stuff, man. I'm going to let y'all listen to, the, to the, this new story, too, man. It's a lot of this stuff going on in our society, period. In our communities, period. It's a lot of this stuff going on. It's just, it's just sad, man. It's a lot of crazy stuff. You get, it's just too much crazy stuff going on in the world, period. And I'm just here to bring it to the forefront, man. Let's listen to this news story, man. I, I just don't understand, man. If you don't want the child, give the child up for adoption. Don't take your anger and aggression out on the child and end up killing the child. Don't torture and torment the child because you're mad at your own life decisions. Stop having babies by random men and expecting these random men who just laid down with you just to get some, get some tail. You keep thinking they're going to stick around. That is crazy. So they take out their anger and frustration on the child because of their own poor life decisions. And this girl had to suffer and be tormented her entire 11 years here. Let's listen to this news story. I'm out of here, man. How could a mom starve, torture, and even kill her own daughter? There's certainly no logical way to explain what Kishana Thomas did. But in court today, she answered for it. She took a plea deal for killing her 11-year-old daughter, Janiyah, and stuffing her body in a freezer. As Fox 13's Kimberly Cuisan now reports today, the 33-year-old was sentenced to 65 years in prison. 11-year-old Janiyah Thomas lived a life of horrible abuse. She was starved, beaten, and held like a prisoner. And she had no one to turn to for help, not even her own mother. Wearing shackles, Kishana Thomas stepped into a Manatee County courtroom Wednesday to accept a plea deal on her daughter's murder. She barely said a word other than a short statement that seemed prepared and whispered to her by her own attorney. I'm doing this, Your Honor, because I feel this is in my best interest and that I don't want to put my kids through a trial. Investigators don't know exactly when Janiyah was killed. Her siblings say they came home from school one day and she was gone. The last time anyone saw her alive was in early 2015. 
Nine months later, her small body was found in a locked freezer. Kishana had dropped off at a relative's home. It was found stuffed into a FedEx box, which was post-dated mid-January 2015. How Janiyah died is also a mystery. Only Kishana knows. But Assistant State Attorney Art Brown says the plea deal means Janiyah's siblings will not have to relive the nightmare. It saved the remaining children who would have been witnesses in the case, the trauma of having to relive uh, an absolutely horrific uh, series of events. As part of the deal, Kishana pled no contest to second-degree murder and other charges. She got 65 years, which prosecutors say is practically life. The 65-year sentence effectively places Kishana Thomas uh, away from the rest of Manatee County and particularly children for the rest of her life. A few family members sat in court but chose not to speak. A distant cousin told us afterwards this means peace for Janiyah's innocent life. We look at it as justice being served, but at, at the end of the day, it's still sad.